The following program presents principles designed to promote good health. It should not take the place of personal professional care. Viewers should always consult their qualified health practitioner before considering alternative treatment. to have a look at cholesterol because there's a lot of um, really misinformation about cholesterol. So with cholesterol, 80% of the cholesterol that the liver makes is made from glucose. And 20% of the cholesterol that the body makes is made from fat. You see that equation? It's not the butter on the bread, it's the bread under the butter that's the problem. And last night we looked at the dangers of wheat and how when the, heat, when the wheat was hybridised in the 1950s, it produced a type of wheat that is very difficult for the body to, to handle. Now last night we looked at how it gets the blood sugar level up higher than even sugar because of the type of starch that was cre created in the hybridization process. And in a minute I'm going to show you the gluten and how it actually affects the function of the heart. But first of all we'll look at cholesterol. Now there are two types of cholesterol two main types. There's high density lipoprotein called LD, HDL and LDL is the low density lipoprotein. So let me draw a, a uh, heart vessel here and show you what's happening in the heart because HDL and LDL they're like the maintenance team on the, on the blood vessels in the body. And HDL's role is to carry away excess cholesterol. So it's called the carrier. Whereas LDL, it's the repairer and the rebuilder. That's its role in the body. So when you consider that LDL is the repairer and the rebuilder, where are you going to find LDL? <laughs> You'll find LDL wherever there's a need for repair, wherever there's a need for rebuilding. So the two different types of cholesterol are high density lipoprotein, HDL, and low density lipoprotein. Because of its low density, LDL is always found on the edge of the blood vessel. And because of its high density, high density lipoprotein is always found in the middle. That's where you'll find the two different types of cholesterol. Now let's say a person is a smoker, 4,000 chemicals in one cigarette, and that can cause damage in the arterial wall. So the chemicals in cigarettes can cause a hole in the arterial wall. Uh, mercury, it's a neurotoxin. It can cause a hole to be made in the arterial wall. Yeast or mould in the blood can cause a hole to be made in the wall. And if the person's on a high wheat, high sugar, high alcohol diet, feeding the yeast, can you see what's happening? What's going to plug up the hole in the arterial wall? LDL. LDL plugs it up. Remember what LDL is? The repairer and the rebuilder. It'll plug up the hole. That's what it does. Now what's supposed to happen is the person's supposed to stop smoking, the person's supposed to get out of the mouldy house, the person's supposed to uh, get the mercury fillings out of their mouth or instead of having tuna and salad for lunch they have uh, hummus or lentil burgers and salad for lunch. The person's supposed to stop smoking and drinking and high wheat, high sugar. And at the same time, that's a person supposed to be eating highly nourishing food. So where's your fibre? All your plant food, plant-based have fibre, your whole foods. Where's your protein? Your protein is found in your legumes, your, your lentils, chickpeas, lima beans, tofu. 
only if it's organic, nuts and seeds. And where's your fats, your nuts and your seeds, and also your coconut oils, your olive oils? When a person is eating those nutrients, the body can heal the whole. Can you see that? All those nutrients basically are all the building materials that the body needs to heal the whole. And then HDL comes along and takes away the excess cholesterol. Can you see how these two work together? in maintaining the arterial wall, and often LDL is blamed as the bad cholesterol. The body doesn't make anything bad. Hmm? No, they work together in maintaining arterial strength, because if nothing plugs up the hole, the blood can leak into the tissues and we can die. What an amazing body that God gave us. But do you know what's happening with many people? Many people don't realise what the smoking's doing to them, or the drinking, or the wheat, or the sugar, or the mouldy house, or the mercury fillings in their mouth. Many are sick through ignorance. So they continue. And the person's so busy, they don't have time to cook the lentils, and all they've got time for is cereal, or the quick sandwich for lunch, or the quick pasta two-minute noodles for tea. And so they don't have the nourishment needed to repair the whole, not just plug it up like LDL, to actually repair it so HDL can be taken away. And so what's happening in the arterial wall? It's building up and up and up and up and up and up. So what's happening in the arteries? It's called atherosclerosis or arteriosclerosis. When I worked as a psychiatric nurse for 18 months, I worked in the operating theater and we would do basic surgical procedures on psych patients. And we did a bypass one day. And when the, when the artery had been taken out, and what do they do? They actually cut one from the leg here and sew that in the heart. And by the way, that artery wall is not made of strong stuff like this artery, so it's not going to last as long. And the surgeon got the artery that had been cut out and he got like tweezers and he started to pull the white gristle out of the artery. And we look at that white gristle and we go, oh, that cholesterol's bad. But you know what is never addressed? Why is it there? Uh-huh. <laughs> Why is it there? And you know, some people don't have any build-up on their arteries. Why do some do and why do some don't? Newton's third law of motion states that to every action, there is an equal and an opposite reaction. There is always a reason. And so, what people are told, it's the fat, yeah? It's the fat, it's not the fat. In fact, every muscle, every cell in the body needs fat. The brain is the fattiest organ in the body. About a year ago, Time Magazine did an article on fat. Front page of Time Magazine, little curl of butter and it said, fat. No, it said butter, why we were wrong on the fat. And it was about a six-page article and it addressed all the research that had been done in the, or quoted in the 80s saying fat was bad, showing that all this research was flawed research. It's not the fat. <laughs> fat is not the problem. And when someone has a heart attack, or someone has a bit of a build-up and a potential to heart attack, what do they put on? Cholesterol-lowering medication, yeah? Well, your liver is the organ that makes cholesterol. And what this uh, medication does, two of the most popular are Lipitor and Crestor, they block the pathway in the liver that the liver uses to make cholesterol, thus stopping the body making so much cholesterol. But that pathway is also the pathway that the liver uses to make coenzyme Q10. Have you heard of coenzyme Q10? That's your heart protective enzyme. So someone has a heart attack, goes on cholesterol-lowering medication to prevent a heart attack, they can actually be increasing the risk 
of heart attack. There is no research to show that Crestal and Lipitor prevent heart disease. Did you know that? Mm-hmm. There's even a book called The Human Cost of Lipitor. Let me tell you the side effects of Lipitor. Muscle wasting, interested? Uh, dementia, Alzheimer's, memory loss. And they've added another one to that now, breast cancer. Because it's from cholesterol that all our hormones are made. In fact, if cholesterol levels go too low, that person's going to be vitamin D deficient. And there are 2,500 receptor sites on the DNA for vitamin D. Body can't function without vitamin D. And vitamin D is made from cholesterol. Sex and stress hormones can't be made properly if you don't have enough cholesterol. Too low cholesterol is just as dangerous as too high. <coughs> I've had guests say to me, well, my husband's on Lipitor and his memory's gone. I don't know anyone who's interested in muscle loss, memory loss, or Alzheimer's or dementia, are you? And you can actually very safely come off cholesterol-lowering medication immediately with no ramifications. It is not proven to prevent heart disease. It's a non-issue. What causes heart disease? Absolutely the build-up in the artery, but why is the build-up there? It's because of the high sugar, high wheat, high alcohol diet. It's because of the lifestyle, basically, that, uh, that many are doing today. It's a whole lot of little things that are causing this. So another no is not fat, but it's wheat. Why wheat? Well, when the hybridization process of making the wheat, the gluten or protein structure of wheat was changed. So originally, wheat was inkhorn. No, I don't think that I should be there. I think that I should be there. Enkhorn wheat, that was the original wheat. And it had a very fragile structure. And that fragile protein or gluten structure means very easy to be broken down, so easy to be broken down in the grind, in the cooking, in the chewing, in your digestive enzymes. And it is not sure when, but a few thousand years ago, there was a, a field hybrid with another wild grass that produced emma wheat. And emma wheat is not quite as fragile, but it is still fairly fragile. And it is the emma wheat that was, went through the intensive crossbreeding. So the hybridized wheat that was hybridized in the 50s went worldwide in the 70s. So by the 1990s, in New Zealand, in Australia, in America, every pasta, every wheat, every cereal, every donut, cake, etc., etc., is made of the hybridized wheat. And that structure of that hybridized wheat is incredibly complex. Very difficult for the gut to break down. And you look at the timeline, 1990s, well established, that's when all the gluten intolerance, gluten sensitivity, gluten uh, intolerance to the point of celiac. Celiac can't even touch it. Gluten intolerant, really, they should only have it once in a blue mood. Gluten sensitive, they can probably have a slice of bread or wheat. <laughs> so basically, gluten sensitive, gluten intolerant and gluten uh, to the point intolerant to the point of celiac basically is just um, describing the intensity of the intolerance. Can you still buy the original? You can buy spelt and you can buy kamut. And spelt and kamut have the same structure of the emma. So you can still buy that. You can still buy spelt. Spelt and kamut, you can buy it as pasta, you can buy it as bread. Celiac, who are severe intolerance, often they can't even handle the spelt or the kamut. 
but often gluten sensitive or gluten intolerant can. Now if that hybridised wheat was made into a sourdough bread, because of the culturing process, it breaks down the gluten structure to make it a little bit more fragile. And if spelt is made into sourdough bread, it can bring it back to that original structure of the Enkhorn wheat. Now, if someone eats wheat and they have an intolerance to it, do you know it can get that blood pressure up? So blood pressure can be caused by wheat. So how do you know what you are? I've got a challenge for you. Stop it for two months, see what happens. <laughs> well, what will we eat? Well, you can buy some very nice spelt and kamut breads in New Zealand. <laughs> Go to your health food shop. You can buy gluten-free pastas. You can buy gluten-free cereals. But as you saw in my lecture last night, and by what I explained before the break, the three main essential food groups are your fiber, your protein, and your fats. What we need to do is get the carbohydrate part of our diet down, down, down. So what do we eat? Well, I'll tell you what I ate today. For breakfast, I had some new season apple. I had some uh, nectarine. I had some almonds. I had a gluten-free uh, bread that had been bought that had buckwheat and some very nice grains in it. I had olive oil on that, I had avocado on top of that, and I had black-eyed beans on that. Very high in fibre, everything had fibre, generous amounts of protein and some healthy fats. And then I'm, I'm not hungry again, I think we ate at 8 o'clock today, and I think we had lunch at 2.30, something like that. You're not hungry to learn. Fantastic, because those foods keep the body going. They slowly release the nutrients. What did we have for lunch? Well, we got some magnificent fresh corn, so we all had a big cob of corn each. We had a big salad with avocado. We made a guacamole, mashed up the avocado with some oil and salt and uh, lemon juice. And then uh, we had baked sweet potato. You call it kumra. And then I blended up cashews to a milk with garlic and salt, and then I cooked um, broccoli in that, and I'd already cooked some chickpeas, which I'd rinsed well and put into that. That was our lunch today. It's a quarter past eight, I'm not hungry, and I don't expect to get hungry again. Can you see that food takes you the distance? Very low carbohydrate. When you eat like that, you hardly need bread. So no caffeine, no wheat, and no refined sugar. Refined sugar is dangerous. It clogs up the arteries. It makes the blood very, very sticky. And you can get so many delicious sweeteners like honey and maple syrup and even the coconut sugars. There's no need to go to the refined sugar. Alcohol is bad news on the heart and tobacco. They must stop if you want heart health, keeping the heart with all diligence. And number four, sorry, we've done number four, this is number five, is high fiber. All your plant-based foods are high fiber. Generous amounts of protein and your healthy fats. Now there are two herbs that work very well in strengthening the heart. And you may have heard of this herb. It's number six we're up to. It's the hawthorn berry. And I wouldn't be surprised if you've got hawthorn berries growing in New Zealand because in Australia they grow in Victoria because they love the cold climate. I think they're originally from um, England. And because the English came here, I wouldn't be surprised if they bought the hawthorn berry. The hawthorn berry strengthens the heart. It brings it back to normality. Often people have heart arrhythmia, often caused by caffeines and wheats and refined sugar, not even realizing that the food they're eating is causing the problem. 
but hawthorn berry can bring it back to normality. It's an incredibly safe herb. You might get hawthorn berry tablets and have one three times a day. If it's not doing it, do two three times a day. Do four three times a day. It's very, very safe. You see, if you don't turn the tap off, you're still going to be mopping up in the other corner. That's why these things must be implemented. You must keep that heart with all diligence. So the hawthorn berry, if your blood pressure's too high, it'll bring it down. If it's too low, it'll bring it up. The other herb is cayenne pepper. Now cayenne pepper is one of the most powerful blood thinners that there is. About 15 years ago, at our health retreat in Melbourne, uh, the chef was giving a cooking class to 15 guests, and I got a call. A lady had had a heart attack. She was about 80. She'd already had a couple that year of my, minor ones. So I ran. I was at the health centre in three minutes. The guests are standing around, terrified, of course. The lady's on the ground. She's totally pale. She was half conscious. A guy was holding a pulse. He said, the pulse is almost gone. I said, quick, get the cayenne pepper. I quickly got half a teaspoon of cayenne pepper and put it in her mouth. She was half conscious. I said, give me a bit of water. She was able to drink a little. And it must have been two minutes, and the guy holding a pulse yelled out, the pulse is strong. I looked at this lady, all the colour had came into her face, and she sat up and said, what happened? It was absolutely incredible. I'd read about it, but now I saw for myself. And everyone standing around was going, whoa. I said, no, it's not me, it's the cane pepper. <laughs> Now, we sold out of cane pepper, that program. <laughs> Everyone was absolutely amazed. What did it do to that lady? What it did to that lady, now remember it takes one minute for one drop of blood to go right round your whole body. And when we put the cane pepper in her mouth, the sublingual glands under her tongue immediately absorbed that cane pepper. So it took one minute to go around the body, and when that cane pepper went into the blood, it thinned the blood. It opened all the little capillaries and got a powerful delivery of blood all through the body. Amazing. Doesn't it burn? Feels like it does, but it doesn't. What you need to do is get a very good quality cane pepper. If it's brown, it's old. It should be bright orange in colour. So you're best really to go to your health food shop. Because sometimes in the supermarket, I've looked at cane peppers and they're brown, they're old. But in the, in the health food shop, you'll, you'll be able to get a nice sparky one. And <coughs> you'll get used to it. I am. In my, t in my sourdough toast in the morning, I put the toast, I put about a teaspoon of olive oil, wonderful oil for the heart. And then I sprinkle about half a teaspoon of cane pepper over that. Then avocado and then black-eyed beans helps, softens the blow <laughs> when, you, when, you, when you sandwich it. Some people love it. If you're not, and some people think, I, I, I don't want to have every mouthful hot. What you can do, I say start with a quarter of a teaspoon and a little bit of water and just throw it down. It'll tingle, but it'll settle down in a few minutes. And have that three times a day. You can even build up to a half a teaspoon three times a day. There's a book called Back to Eden by Jethro Kloss. And there are 10 pages in that book devoted to cane pepper. And you can even Google a book. Um, it's, you, can, you can get it off the internet. Um, I think it's the only way you can get it. It's called Curing with Cayenne by Sam Beiser. Remarkable book. This guy claims that cayenne pepper can even rebuild heart muscle. That's quite incredible, isn't it? You see, cayenne pepper brings blood wherever it goes. And remember what blood is? It's the life of the flesh. It's the river of life in the body. So keep the heart with all diligence, for out of it are the issues of life. So basically, when you look at the heart and you look at the blood, the same things help them both. Now, there is something else that is a very powerful blood thinner, and that is ginger. And you can have ginger as a tea. One of my favorite teas is to finally 
Grate ginger and pour boiling water on it. That makes a delicious tea. Very sparky. If it's too sparky for you, just water it down a bit. And ginger is also not only a blood thinner, but it's a very potent anti-inflammatory herb. And on Saturday afternoon, I think from 6 to 8 o'clock, I'll be doing natural remedies where I'm going to be demonstrating, uh, gi- I'll be demonstrating a ginger poultice and also um, other poultices. Garlic. Garlic has been studied for about 20 years now on the wonders that it, or the wonderful effect it has on the heart and on the blood. And uh, omega-3. Now, the most powerful way to get your omega-3 is, I believe, in the plant kingdom, which is your ground flaxseed or linseed, same thing. And um, chia seeds. Chia seeds are very easy. If you have smoothies, throw them in your smoothie. One thing I love to do at home is I squeeze a grapefruit, get the juice, and I put a cup, oh, maybe a heap tablespoon in the grapefruit juice, mix it around. By the time I've chopped up my other fruit, it's like a soft jelly, and you put your fruit in that. It's a delicious way to have it. And walnuts. These three foods are the highest in omega-3. Flaxseed's the highest, is the second highest, and walnuts come to a close second. So you might have ground flaxseed and chia for breakfast, and you might have walnuts for lunch. And they will keep the blood nice and thin, especially in conjunction with drinking adequate water, having the whole salt. And, uh, and having these basically as part of your food. Hippocrates said, let food be your medicine, and medicine be your food. So also, very important, early nights. Mm-hmm, I think we've heard this one before. <laughs> very important to go to bed early. From last night, do you remember the hours of power, the hours where your batteries are recharging and healing accelerates? 10 till 3, except in the winter. Then it's 9, 9 till 2, 9 till 2 in the winter time. And they are the hours many people miss out on, or they only get half of them because usually of technology. So it's a good idea to start winding down. If you're on the computer, turn it off ideally by nine. <laughs> and, um, and so that everything is winding down. Very hard for your brain to shut down quickly when it's had um, so much stimulation through the eyes. Now there is a hydrotherapy treatment that can um, boost heart function and it can also boost uh, the blood moving through the body and that is cold. So what I suggest is you have your hot shower. I'm very kind to suggest your hot shower but always end with about a 10 to 20 seconds cold. Now this is a good time in the middle of summer to get used to it. And you watch, if you can start to get into the habit of that, if you find the cold hard, turn the hot up uncomfortably hot, and then you almost welcome the cold. Now, I've been having it here, and yes, your cold is <clears throat> very cold, <laughs> but it won't hurt you. It is a fantastic tonic. And remember, you're so hot and steamy, that it's ju- and you can run round and round in the shower. <laughs> And just think of Amelia and I diving in our creek. I'm not asking you to do that. Just have a quick cold shower after every hot. It's one of the best tonic effects. See, what the hot does, it starts the stimulation, stimulates the movement of the, of the uh, blood through the body. But after about five minutes, it starts to slow down a little bit. And if you turn your hot shower off and go out into cool air, you can chill. But if you have your hot shower, end it with cold, that'll wake you up. In fact, a young man said to me one day, I was getting a bit concerned because he was having a coffee every morning. He said, I've just found out something just as powerful as coffee and yet you don't get the downer. I said, what's that? He said, a cold shower. (laughs) 
That'll wake you up. And you might go like this. <laughs> Don't worry about that. It's a, it's a wonderful tonic and you get used to it. You'll get used to it. Just like the cane pepper, you'll get used to it. Just like feeling like you're dying in the interval training, you'll get used to it. And especially when the brain says, it's all right, this, this is very good. And on Saturday morning, where I, at 11 o'clock, where I'm going to show you how you can rewire your brain <laughs> and show you how you can be rewiring your brain right up until the, the day that you die. So if you start implementing this right away, you'll be already starting the rewiring process. That is how you keep the heart with all diligent for out of the, of the issues of life. And that doesn't cost a lot of money, does it? In fact, with most people, it's just some little adjustments in a few areas. So you can have salt and pepper on the table. I have salt and pepper. In fact, I travel with salt and pepper. It's my little shaky bottle of Celtic salt and the cayenne pepper. And then if someone has a heart attack on the plane, I'm all ready, aren't I? <laughs> they might lock me up if they see what I do, though. <laughs> Are there any questions as we close? Yes? Uh, rewiring the brain Saturday, 11 o'clock. What's the duration? It'll be one hour. Okay. Yes? Is Himalayan rock salt? Ah, good question. Is Himalayan rock salt as good as Celtic salt? Himalayan rock salt does have 82 minerals, which is fantastic. But the Celtic salt has more magnesium. So they are both very good. I personally like the Celtic salt. Uh, not as much as it does have. It does. Ha, it does get moist, which is a is fantastic. When your salt gets moist, you know what you think? Great. It's got lots of magnesium in it, but not quite as much as the Celtic. But it certainly still does have some magnesiums in it. Yes. Sure. Lipitor, the side effects of Lipitor. You can go to the web and, you know, you can put in Lipitor and it'll put the side effects up for you, which is memory loss, um, Alzheimer's, dementia, muscle wasting and breast cancer. They're, they're well, when the muscles waste, they ache. That is true. So aching is one of the signs. It is a cholesterol-lowering medication. No, no. You have to get a script for that one. Yes? Baking soda. Baking soda. Is that supposed to uh, happen for you? No, no. Um, tomorrow night we're going to look at the acid alkaline, and baking soda is, is probably one of the most alkalizing substance there is. But if you take baking soda by mouth, it'll just neutralize your stomach acid because that's the only part in the body that should be acid, is the, is the stomach. Now, Dr. Tullio Simoncini, he's an Italian oncologist that has been injecting sodium bicarbonate solution straight into cancers and the cancers are gone. They just, they can't survive in the alkaline environment. Um, so unless you're a doctor and can inject the sodium bicarbon solution, um, which of course we can't. But at our health retreat, when people come to us wanting help with um, cancer, we do sodium bicarbonate wraps. So it's a quite intense treatment. Um, we use about two kilos of sodium bicarb, five litres of water. We dig duct towels in it and wrap, wrap the body in that. So sodium bicarb does have a place. Um, internally, I would only get someone to take it if they had stomach cancer. And I would only advise it, say, first thing in the morning and last thing at night when there's no food in there. So that's, that's a specific there. And you can put sodium bicarb, of course, on the skin. Any other, yes? What about caffeine-free coffee? The caffeine is not there, and often it's been extracted with chemicals, which means you've got chemical residue in there, and you've also got a few other chemicals still in there. 
So it's, it's not really the best option. You had a question up the back? Um, if, you, if you do the interval training and when you go through recovery time, basically if you do a high intensity of uh, 20 seconds and then have a recovery time of 60 seconds, the lactic acid is mostly mopped up just in that recovery time. And that's why the interval training is so effective. But if you don't have the recovery time, it certainly can hang around. Well, all the Lipitor does is stop the liver making cholesterol. So the Lipitor does not clean up the arteries. No, so once you've got clogged arteries, the, the option then is to either have the arteries clogged up or have the liver clean the arteries. No, no, it's not. I've got some excellent news. Say someone has 80% occlusion of their arteries, and we've had guests do this. If they implement this and the blood thinners, that, that can all be taken away because remember that's your HDL role is to actually take that excess away. Yep, all it needs is the right condition. Now it won't happen overnight. <laughs> Depending how clogged it is, it will take it away. Now, warfarin um, is rat poison. You, you're probably aware of that. It causes the rats to bleed to death. But they don't give enough to humans to make them bleed to death. Um, the side effects of that are pretty scary. And warfarin only thins the blood. Warfarin will not take this buildup away. Aspirin supposedly thins the blood, but research is coming out now that it's also causing brain bleeds. Now you want, you know what brain bleeds can lead to is Alzheimer's. So there is no need to take warfarin and there is no need to take aspirin. We've had a, quite a lot of guests come off those, implement this with fantastic results. There is a formula and if you bide by it, the body works, yes? Are there any good supplements to replace the medications? Probably the only thing that I would add to that, and we'll put it on a 10, is magnesium. And magnesium citrate is the most absorbable form of magnesium. But if you're having your whole salt, you're getting magnesium there, and the natural, natural form of magnesium is found in your dark green leafy vegetables. Now remember, when you cook vegetables, you do not lose the minerals. You only lose the minerals if you throw the water away <laughs> that they've been cooked in. Yes? Turmeric's excellent anti-inflammatory. So I probably would advise turmeric Suppl supplementing with turmeric more for arthritis to get the inflammation down. Yes? What do you think about frozen vegetables? Frozen vegetables. I don't think they're the best option, but I think they're a better option than canned vegetables. <laughs> so if um, I would advise having mostly fresh, but frozen probably is your second best. Thank you for your attention tonight. My time is up and I know you're eager to get asleep by 10 o'clock. <laughs> Thank you. And I look forward to seeing you tomorrow night where we have a look at the acid alkaline balance in the body.